On Sunday, President Obama gave the commencement address to the 2013 graduates of The Ohio State University. And he spoke to the graduates, and I realize I'm somewhat repeating what I was riffing on in the last hour, but let me just get uh, get through this, I because I, I think that this is, well, it's, it's, it's a slight variation on the same theme, but it's an important one. He spoke to the graduates about the voices of cynicism surrounding America today, and he said, reject that cynicism. Challenge the new students or the new graduates, the new college graduates, to tackle the issues of today with strength and determination. In fact, uh, he closed his remarks with, is it clip five, Shane? He closed his remarks with this. I dare you, class of 2013, to do better. I dare you to dream bigger. Okay. And uh, clip number one as well, if you could. When we turn away. When we turn away and get discouraged and cynical and abdicate that authority, we grant our silent consent to someone who will gladly claim it. Say to someone, don't be too cynical. But look at the environment that these graduates are stepping out into. Students graduating this year from college will be the most indebted class in history. Their college loan debt is going to haunt them for much of their adult life. And that's not just the bad news for them. It's bad news. It's not bad news just for them, excuse me. It's bad news for our entire economy. According to the Young Entrepreneur Council, the piles of student loan debt that graduates find themselves buried under are preventing them from becoming entrepreneurs and starting small businesses. And small businesses have traditionally been ba the backbone of the American economy. The decline in college graduates becoming entrepreneurs and small business owners is partly to blame for the demise of small businesses in America today. According to statistics in the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics, the percentage of self-employed Americans, also known as entrepreneurs, is at an all-time low. Since Ronald Reagan departed the White House, having set up decades of Reaganomics, the number of startup jobs per 1,000 Americans has decreased by nearly 30%. As a share of the population, the percentage of Americans who are self-employed fell by more than 20% between 1991 and 2010. And according to the U.S. Census Bureau, our economy lost more than 220,000 small businesses, not just business people, businesses during the Great Bush Recession. So in addition to student loan debt, there are a whole bunch of other parts of Reaganomics and Clintonomics that help explain the decline of small businesses in America. Over at the Economic Collapse blog, Michael T. Snyder, a political commentator and Drudge Report favorite, gives his take on why small businesses experience such a decline in America. He points to things like ridiculous regulations and Obamacare as the main culprits behind the death of small business and argues that corporate taxes are hindering business creation, but that our effective, that is, collected corporate tax rates, I mean, the reality is, that our effective, our, our, our effective corporate tax rates in America are the second lowest in the developed world. And corporate tax collections are the lowest they've been in decades, even in the face of the highest corporate profits in the history of our republic. In reality, the demise of small business in America can be tracked back to the presidency of one man, Ronald Reagan. In June 16, 1998, then-chairman of the Federal Trade Commission, Robert Potofsky, testified before Congress about, quote, mergers and corporate consolidation in the new economy, end quote. This was, you know, the whole M&A thing was starting to get a little old. It, it, it went hysterical in the early 80s when Reagan changed the rules and said we're not going to enforce the Sherman Act and all that kind of stuff. But, but it, was, it, people, it was, people were starting to get spooked about it. So he comes along to testify. Uh, these mergers, of course, have made it harder and harder for small businesses to start or compete in the United States. And so Potofsky, in his testimony, talked about why, all these various reasons, why we were seeing so many big businesses merge or consolidate. He pointed to globalization of competition as one driving factor behind the mergers in the 90s. Small business people couldn't compete with cheap labor overseas after Reagan began the changes in our trade policies, and big business could afford to ship their factories to low-wage, high-pollution countries. He then talked about the role that deregulation has in influencing mergers and consolidations. 
Potofsky argued, quote, Many mergers are taking place in industries undergoing or anticipating deregulation. In the 80s, the Commission reviewed a substantial number of mergers in the natural gas industry, which was then undergoing deregulation. Now deregulatory changes are taking place in electricity, telecommunications, banking, and financial services. End of quote. He went on to say that these mergers could hurt competition. Quote, some mergers can harm competition. The harm to competition, in turn, can harm consumers in many ways. Higher prices, restricted supply of products, lower quality goods and services, less variety from which to choose, and less innovation for the future. End of quote. Reagan ushered in the age of mergers and consolidation when he stopped enforcing the Sherman Antitrust Act in, 18, in 1982. His abandonment of that and subsequent un- antitrust laws have allowed corporations to grow to unprecedented sizes, all the while crushing small businesses in America. Most American jobs are created historically by small businesses and through individual entrepreneurship. But Reagan allowed small businesses to be eaten up by giant transnational corporations through hostile takeovers and leveraged buyouts. He changed the rules so that corporate predators like Mitt Romney's Bain Capital could squash small businesses on Main Street USA, sucking the wealth and prosperity out of communities across our country. Before Reagan stepped foot inside the White House, mom-and-pop businesses drove our economy. Main streets were bustling with locally-owned stores. Strip malls were packed with locally-owned shops. Today, all across America, both Main Street and malls are nothing more than the same giant corporate clothing stores, restaurants, jewelry stores, electronic shops. The days of the locally-owned business are dead. One part of the American dream used to be about coming up with an idea and starting your own business. It was about hiring local members of the community to build that business. It was about making good money, saving for retirement, being able to take a vacation every now and then, and offering the same to your employees. But thanks to Reaganomics, that vision of the the American dream is no more, by and large. And small business in America is on life support. So conservatives, they can try to blame Obama, smokestack regulations, and Obamacare, like Drudge is doing today. For the death of small business in America, all they want. But anybody who knows history knows otherwise. Reaganomics is what killed small business in America and continues to kill small business in America. And frankly, things like, you know, Obamacare and some decent regulation of these very large corporations could bring back small businesses in America. 